Triceratops here and welcome back for our random game. Today we are playing the game Our Life. It is free to play on Steam. So here we go, let's check it out. Welcome to Our Life, beginnings and always. There are various ways you can customize and interact with the game. This tutorial is an overview of how certain features work. You can read the full tutorial from the main menu to learn about everything in detail. To start off, the game is divided into three period. To start off, the game is divided into three time periods called steps. Step one, childhood. Step two, adolescence, and step three, teenage. Our life is further divided into sets of vignettes. I don't know that take place during specific periods of time. Those are called moments. Moments can be played in any order or skipped entirely. You move on to the next step whenever you want by selecting that summer is ending. Step 1 through 3 include 5 moments each and even more can be unlocked by purchasing DLCs. Some are out now and other DLCs will release later on. A lot happens over the years that go by, especially in regard to the character you play as. You determine nearly everything about the main character, name, appearance, personality, pronouns, interests, skills, their relationships with major characters, and so on. You can decide to change the details as time goes on, with a few exceptions. Your last name, skin tone, and eye color can't be altered once set. Much of the MC's basic traits are determined on a character creation screen. As the MC grows up, more options become available on the screen. As mentioned, one of the decisions you'll get to make for your character is selecting a name. You can type in any name you like, or you can pick a preset name. Preset options are called voiced names because the name will be voiced aloud by the romantic lead. You'll get to hear him say your name as you play through the story. Only the default name, Jamie, is included in the base game. Hundreds more can be added by getting a free voice name expansion DLC. The full collection of names will be separated out as a DLC that releases shortly after the game launches because of how large it is. If you're not that interested in that feature, you don't need to get it. Each name in the DLC belongs to or was selected by someone who supported this project. On the character creation screen, there's a cute dolly you can decorate to get an idea of what your MC looks like with the different traits you put together. Not all the things you decide about the MC appear on the doll. The script referencing what, you, what you've decided for the MC is the main way those decisions influence the game. Our life has a first person perspective so your character doesn't appear next to other characters' sprites. Or spirits. I don't know. <laughs> You only see the MC as the decorative doll on the character creation screens. There's also a second type of special MC base screen, the interest slash comfort screen. Unless you get DLCs, the game has one love interest, um, Cove Holden. He grows up with the MC and the interest slash comfort screen is crucial for determining how that plays out. Interest level sets how much you like him. There are four levels. Disinterest, Fond, Crush, and Love. Love is only available starting in Step 3 and if you were at Fond or Crush in Step 2. Comfort determines how you generally react slash think when it comes to him. There are three levels. Nervous, Relaxed, Direct. Your level of interest and comfort will set the type of dynamic your character has with the love interest. What you did in the past will influence the present and feelings can change over time. You get to pick your interest slash comfort near the beginning of every step. Comfort can switch between the three levels as you please. Your interest level can only stay the same or increase. Your current level of interest will become the new lowest option on the screen in the future. For example, if you decide to be fond in step one, disinterest will be gone from the screen in step two and three which will make Fawn the bottom level option for your relationship. Interest level has an impact when it comes to physically interacting with Cove. While growing up, things are rather simple. If you get along with one another and have a close relationship, you can choose to touch him and Cove will occasionally interact with the MC in lighthearted or comforting ways. 
but starting in step three, touching can become more romantic or suggestive if you're at crush or love. To make sure things go nicely with that, there will be an extra choice to determine initiative level, and a bonus mini tutorial that goes along with the choice to explain the feature in more detail. Basically, even if you decide to like Cove, the game won't force you to act on those feelings. You can always choose not to get together with him, choose not to accept or give romantic gestures, etc. If you do decide to date Cove, though, you can't break up with him later. Interest slash comfort gets the basics down, but it's the choices that appear throughout the normal game events that decide what actually happens between the MC and Cove. And it isn't only the MC who is impacted by your decisions. Cove grows and changes over the years. How he's treated and what he experiences help shape who he becomes. In step 2 and step 3, Cove's personality, appearance, and interests will vary based on what happened in the previous step. It's something of a mystery exactly how your decisions end up changing him. You can try to guess as you go along. Or if you prefer, you can also just design your own ideal cove directly using the cove creator option that pops up at the beginning of steps 2 and 3. Making the choices you want is always more important than making a choice because you feel like you have to in order to get a certain result. When a choice does appear, usually you'll see that hovering the cursor over an option shows a certain color, yellow, blue, or green. The colors aren't related to specific points or effects. They're only there to give a bit of insight on the tone slash emotion of the choice, since text alone can potentially be read in more than one way. Blue tends to be casual and straightforward, yellow more emo emotive and reactive, and green less certain and uncommitted. Though there are hundreds of options in our life, and not every choice menu falls in line with that pattern, picking just one color every time doesn't give a gameplay benefit. Only stick to a certain type if that's what you happen to like, otherwise switch between them freely. Always pick yellow, never pick yellow, pursue romance, fight from the start, or right from the start, never romance the love interest, be disagreeable or amiable, none of them will lead to a bad ending. You're welcome to enjoy the events and shape the story without reservation, and then if you like, you can play again to try something new. There's only ever more good content to discover. We hope you'll have a nice time with our life. Thank you for playing. <laughs> Here we go. Face shape. Um. Peach. Skin tone. We'll go brown. Eye shape. Rectangle. Eye color. Um, pink, sure. Hair front. Um, let's see. Long, yes. Hair back. Ponytail, sure. Front color. Pink, back color. We'll go full pink. First name, random letter. Boop. Why is it always a G? Another random letter. <laughs> Okay, B. Bianca. Last name. Um, Sanchez. Why not? <laughs> she. Okay. Can't really see the birth marks. Freckles. Yes. <laughs> Glasses. Um, no. Clothing types. Dress. Shirt, skirts, pants, any. 
bracelets, necklaces. I don't know about hats. Um, we'll say she has a scar on her arm and a birthmark on her back. Alright. Summer in Sunset Bird was a special time of year. Your usually sleepy town began to bustle. It was a popular tourist destination with people coming from all over to enjoy the beach, the weather, and the relaxation that came with both. The smell of the ocean, crisp and salty, hung in the air, bringing three whole months of school less vacation with it. During the summer, your moms didn't like you to wander too far outside of your neighborhood, so you knew the area pretty well. That included the people. Families came and went from Sunset Bird, but they mostly stayed and did what your mom called putting down roots. They built businesses, they got to know each other, and they definitely said hello to the nice young kids who waved when passing their stores. Going for a walk around town mostly meant that the familiar, friendly residents waved or asked how your family was, or most often just said hello. You didn't really get why they always had to say hi. They saw you every day, but you nodded back at them anyway. You ended up saying hi to a lot of different people since most of the tourists that came and went every summer were the same ones. You were too anxious to say hi back to most of the other residents that greeted you, but they all knew you well enough to expect that. We said hi to them. You enjoyed learning all about where they were visiting from and hoped to visit those places one day too. But today there was a man sitting on the curb outside your house. He was sitting with his head in his hands, his whole body slumped over, and you wondered if he was even a real person or a statue that had magically sprung up from the ground overnight. Whoever or whatever he was, you had never seen him before. One thing you one thing about knowing everyone in Sunset Bird was that people who you didn't recognize really, really stood out. It was rare for tourists to venture into the residential district, as your moms called it. So for you, not knowing who a total stranger was set off a lot of red flags. Your moms had a talk with you and your big sister Lizzie about the kind of situation before. You hadn't exactly been listening at the time, you think it could be okay to talk to new people. They mentioned that some people aren't good to talk to, but other types of people can help you even if you don't know them. You remember that it's okay to run away if you feel uncomfortable. You don't have to worry about being polite then. The middle one. You weren't sure about this man yet. Still, you felt a bit scared knowing that he was blocking the way to your front door. But you were pretty interested. You wanted to go. You wanted to know more about what was going on. Whether he was nice or not, you didn't want to be bothered. <laughs> a little scared he's blocking the door. You slowed down, your mind racing for ideas on how to get past him unseen, but it was too late to escape. There was a split second where your eyes met and you took in a shaky breath, your eyes darting to the sky, pretending to stare at a bird who was hovering nearby. Hey! His voice startled you and made you jump, but you still didn't look at him. The bird landed on top of a nearby gatepost and his black feathers ruffled against the gentle breeze. Trying to keep your eyes on it was tough, especially when the man stood up and started to make his way toward you. Not wanting to seem too approachable, you fold your arms and stare. Still unsure about him, but willing to be friendly, you offer the stranger a smile. Your whole body was frozen in place as he approached. A little smile. The man gives you a grin of his own back. Do you live around here? What's your name? You look the man up and down, taking in his tan skin and relaxed appearance. At least his clothes were relaxed, the way he was acting wasn't. He had sharks on his shorts and a stingray tattoo, and you wondered if he was obsessed with the ocean or something. While you made your assessment, he looked at you expectantly, waiting for an answer to his question. Yeah, I live here. I live right there. My name is Bianca. You continued to say nothing. Yeah, I live here. That's great! He looked happy to hear it, giving you a broad smile. He reached into his pocket and pulled out a clean $20 bill. It crinkled in his hand as he held it up to you. Even more confused than before, you looked back at him. Well, could you do me a favor? Nothing bad. Sorry, I should have... Let me start over. <laughs> he cleared his throat and stood up straighter. 
from where you're standing, it just made him look creepier. I have a son. His name is Cove, who's about your age. Cove? That seemed like a strange name for an actual living person to you. You chewed on the inside of your cheek. This guy was definitely obsessed with water. You thought that was pretty cool. But definitely the kind of name someone like this guy would give their kid. We moved in across the street, see? He gestured toward the house that had been empty for a year, his watch catching the late afternoon sunlight and reflecting off the walls. The gigantic for sale sign was finally gone. You must be Bianca Sanchez, right? I met your moms earlier and they told me you were eight just like him, so... He shook the $20 bill to bring it back to your attention, a hopeful smile tilting his lips at the corners. Can you try to be friends with the boy? Just give it a chance and you can keep this. He's a good kid. You'll like him. Do you mind? But you've got to keep it a secret too, okay? It wouldn't be friendly to say his dad sent you. <laughs> you eyed the man. You kind of felt sorry for Cove. Did other kids really get their parents to pay for friendships? <laughs> we feel bad for him. This definitely wasn't the normal way kids made friends. You knew that. What do you say? Want to make a deal? I don't want the money. No, thank you. Sorry. He deflated enough to notice, but not completely. Right. Are you sure? It won't be so bad, even if it's just for summer. That'd be enough. That only made this sound more strange to you. Why does it lasting for the summer matter? When it was clear his initial strategy was going to fly, he tucked the bill into a back pocket and changed the request. I get it. You don't have to. Would you be comfortable with he and I coming by for a normal visit? No money involved? Yeah, I want to meet him. Okay, you can do that, I guess. You'd have to ask my mom. You didn't answer the man. Ask my mom. His smile got bigger again. His eyes crinkled at the sides. Of course. They invited us over earlier, but I'd like to ask you too. Then I guess you can. I'll bring him by tomorrow. I wanted him to meet and greet with the neighbors today, but, well, I don't know where he's gotten off to. He laughed, and he laughed when he said that, but with the way his face looked, you thought he was actually, he actually wanted to cry. If, if you see him, can you tell him to come home? He's got a pink cast and glasses. You can't miss it. Um, I can try. You nodded, not totally certain that you'd find Cove, but willing to look. The man smiled and reached out to pat you on the head, paused before doing something, and pulled his hand away instead. Your moms are already checking around for me. Such a thoughtful group you are. Now I better go look too. Can't put everyone else to work while I keep sitting here. I thought he might come back and that's not what's important. I have to go. Thanks again, Bianca, so much. He jogged off down the street without another word. You decide to check the hills behind your house. Step one, first sight. <laughs> the chirping of crickets and the tall grass greeted you quiet and familiar. From the top of the hill, you could see the ocean. As you walked, you listened to the crash of the waves on the shore and the seagulls squawking as they settled down for the night. You've always loved the ocean. It was so much fun. You love to hear stories about the sea, about the merfolk and sea serpents you imagine living far beneath the waves. You didn't enjoy the beach all that much, especially the sand which got absolutely everywhere. We love the ocean. <laughs> and beach. Sometimes Lizzie would join you. The two of you splashing each other in the waves. Those were best days. You took in a deep breath. You wanted to try to relax and couldn't. You weren't sure what, but something told you that you weren't alone, so you glanced around. There was a boy sitting at the top of one hill, almost completely hidden with the long grass and white flowers surrounding him. His head was buried in his knees, staring ahead by himself. For whatever reason, you probably just... Probably just that he wasn't paying attention. He hadn't noticed you yet. You watched him a minute longer, feeling a little bit like you'd found a deer in the wild. Though Deer didn't have green hair, wavy eyebrows, huge glasses, pink cast, sad frowns. Pink cast. <laughs> but this new boy did. You wondered how he got it. After a few more seconds, you took a step forward, then another. And then he glanced your way. His aquamarine eyes reflected the light of the moon. You stopped, raising a hand to acknowledge him and showed you weren't scary. 
Hi. Hey, space cadet. Are you lost? Hi. With a start, he jumped to his feet, his hands bawling into fists at his sides. He didn't say anything, just stared at you in a strange way. He'd been crying. There were traces of tears on his cheeks and his knees soaking the hem of his shorts, and his eyes were still shining with a few more. You've obviously caught him off guard. His pink cast seemed to glow in the twilight, though when he caught you staring at it, he hid his arm behind his back. Something the man earlier had said stuck out to you. Code? Ah. Uh. <laughs> Eyes wide, he studied you. How do you know that? I met your dad. I'm all-knowing. Lucky guess. I met your dad. Oh. So, is this your hill? He gestured with his uninjured arm to the patch of grass surrounding you, his face following at the prospect. I can leave if it is. Yep. You can't own a hill. You shook your head. I shake my head. While doing so, you also picked at a strand of lint on your leg. What a weird question to ask someone. Oh. He sat back down with a thump, resting his chin on his knees again. Curious about the strange new boy with the odd dad, you sat on the patch of grass next to him. The pure white flowers that covered this hill rocked back and forth gently as the stars twinkled above. The way they dotted the sky made them seem like flowers too. The night wind was cool as it traveled over the ocean and up the hill, chasing away the heat from the afternoon sun. Why are you here? Why'd your family move? Why are you here? A quiet hiccup escaped Cove as soon as you asked the question. Almost like they'd never stop, his tears started up again with a vengeance. My parents. They don't want to live together with me anymore. The tears fell fast and heavy over his flushed cheeks, sticking in his dark lashes. My mom made my dad leave and he took me with him and now we have a house here and I want to go home. The outburst took you off guard. By the time he was done wailing, Cove's chest was heaving with exhaustion. He sniffled and removed his glasses, wiping at his eyes with the back of his hand before he put them back on again. I hate this place. I want my real life back. I want my mom. I'm sorry. Your dad seems kind of nice. <laughs> That's right. You'll like it here. You just have to get used to it. Stop crying. I'm sorry. <laughs> He slipped his hand underneath his glasses and pressed his fingers against his eyelids. Cove wound himself up again for another long crying fit. You felt bad for him, being forced to come here with no choice. You couldn't imagine what it would feel like to live with only one of your moms, but it must be pretty hard. But from way off in the distance, you heard your parents. Bianca! Cove! Kids! Where did you go? Cove looked at you, tears still clinging to his cheeks. Don't tell them we're here. I don't want to go back to that house. I want to go home. You can handle it. You have to go. Don't worry so much. Sorry I have to. It will be okay. It will be okay. <laughs> you stood up, struck by a sudden need to reassure Cove. It, it's not gonna all be fun, but isn't he your family too? Yeah, I guess. Then you can count on him when you really, really need him. You shot him a grin and pushed yourself to your feet. Slowly, Cove stood up with you, still looking a little reluctant. His dad's voice rang out again. Cove, can you hear me? He looked toward the sound of his dad's voice, silent, then turned away while rubbing his not bandage arm. Sorry, I still don't want to go. You called out yourself. You weighed silently with him. You tried to convince him. You tried to convince him. Are you sure? You'd have to stay outside the whole night and sleep on wet grass. Before Coke could say anything else, you heard his dad's voice again, even closer than before. There you are, bud. The trio of parents appear... The trio of parents appeared over the curve of the hill. Instantly, all of their eyes landed on you and they rushed over. Both of your moms were at your side in a split second, faces filled with worry. Bianca, you're here after all. We had been at the park to check for Cove and then heard what happened earlier. When you met the new neighbor, I thought you might have gone off further away. 
No, we were just sitting in the grass. Why is everybody acting like this is such a big thing? We're okay, don't worry. Cove didn't want to go home just yet. We were just sitting in the grass. Thank God you're both fine. Were you two having fun out here? You looked over at Cove, who was wiggling against his dad's tight hug and pushing out his arms. You shrugged. Yes, I like him. Um, he's good. I think I'm gonna marry him. <laughs> um, sure. <laughs> you nodded, smiling slightly. Finally, letting go of his squirming, scowling son, Cove's dad turned to the three of you. Thanks very much for finding him. I really don't know this neighborhood. Good thing Bianca knows this whole area so well. Absolutely, we should be getting home now. It's been a long day for us all. Say goodbye, Cove. Bye. The two of them walked off into the darkness, heading toward the neighborhood. You watched Cove's bright pink cast until it disappeared. Hmm, tell you what, we'll have a proper play date tomorrow, okay? Your new friend's dad wanted to bring him by to see you and Lizzie. How does that sound? Sure, can I show him my stuff? It sounds like words. You nod, ducking your head down. Sure. Of course. Then okay. Both of your moms laugh, the sounds overlapping into a warm, familiar chorus. Mommy put her arm around your shoulder and led you towards the path. Satisfied and more than a little ready to go to bed after your long, exciting day, you followed them home. My feeling for Co. Nervous indifference. <laughs> okay. Early the next morning, you were poking at your food, eating it slowly. Your sister Lizzie had run out earlier to go play, but you'd stayed put. Today, just like your mom had promised, Cove was coming over to hang out. Excited to see your new friend again, Bianca? Um, I guess. Okay. With that said, you are done with your breakfast. Yeah, haha, <laughs> I don't know, am I? Your bowl is entirely empty, so you're not. Yeah. With all the exasperation and eight-year-old Kim Muster, you looked at your empty cereal bowl, then at home. Okay. Okay, attitude kid, we see. Good job, he should be here soon. Cleanup began, and then on cue there was a knock. It was hesitant, like the person wasn't sure they were in the right place. Still loud, though. We need to get more obvious. We need to get a more obvious doorbell. I know, I know. Bianca, could you get it? Because mom said so, you wandered over to the door. Hey, Sanchez family, thanks for having us. Mr. Holden, as your moms have called him, and his son were here. Cove looked different in the bright lighting of your living room and when he wasn't crying. With his dad standing in front of him, mom and mommy went behind you. You and Cove looked at each other. You studied Cove apathetically. This was the parents' plan, not yours. Not seeming any more excited than you were, he just stared back. Do you want to go play in your room, Bianca? Sure. So, my room is this way. Okay. Take care. Let us know if you need anything, you two. Have fun, kids. See you. See you later, son. Play nice. You led him to your room, puffing out your chest a little bit at the sight of your treasures. There were lots of stuffed animals, a cool bed, a window to look out. It was a great room. You hadn't had anyone to show it to in a while, but you were really proud of it. He leaned in a little closer to one of your drawings on the wall. I like this. Me too. I drew that. Thank you. I don't. Thank you. You're welcome. You smiled at him. You were proud of that particular piece of art and you were glad he noticed it. He turned to look around the room a little more, studying the books on your desk and the pictures on the walls. You started to feel a bit nervous. You felt the atmosphere was kind of awkward. You were glad with company. You hoped he liked your room. Nervous. You wanted to say something, but didn't know what, so you let him keep looking. Then his eyes landed on the tiny box of beach things you collected tucked away by your door. He took a step towards it before hesitating and pointing at it instead. What's that? A horde of stuff I found on the beach? Oh. 
Do you have any driftwood in there? Dragging the box into the middle of the room, you and Cove walked down next to it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you gestured to a piece at the bottom, still covered with specks of sand. Neat. This is a good collection. You got the sense from the tone of his voice that he wasn't just saying it to be nice or to be like Shiloh. He actually meant it. Ah, Shiloh is coming over. Shiloh. My sister's friend. He wants to, um, meet you. Mm. Do I have to see him? It'll be okay, I think. Here, I found this shell in a log and... You pulled out seashell after seashell, explaining where you got in each one and holding them up against the light. There were big ones, small ones, pink, purple, and orange. Most of them you washed off in the bathroom sink when you brought them home, cleaning off the sand. Over the past few years, you'd even learn some of their scientific names. The collection was so huge and varied that you had lots of funny stories to tell for all of them. Your voice flattered a little bit, yeah, flattered a little bit, but you kept going best you could. Funny. Apparently fascinated either by the stories or by the shells themselves, Cove listened with what looked like the full force of his attention. Like when you almost got pinched by a hermit crab while searching for shells, and after watching him scuttle back into the ocean, you found another empty shell that was almost a twin to his home. It was a new experience to be the center of such dedicated focus, even if it was only directed at the shells. Kids, come down to the living room. You could tell the idea was making him unhappy, but Mommy wasn't giving you much of a chance to hang around. Cove hadn't been like this meeting you. You guessed it was because he thinks you found each other by accident, not that a parent made it happen. Mr. Holden must be right that telling Cove his dad was part of that would be a bad idea. Before you knew it, you'd both been ex escorted downstairs and deposited in the living room ready for Shiloh's visit. The two of you sat side by side on the floor of your home's entryway. I brought the box of shells. I want I want to keep looking at them. Great, okay, but be careful. You should have asked. Okay, but be careful. I will. You weren't sure if you could trust someone else with your treasures yet, so you stayed next to him while he opened the lid and peered inside. Cove reached in and pulled out a big orange shell. Oh. Like he hadn't spoken aloud yet, he turned to you and held it up, his eyes shining. I think this one is the best of them. That's my favorite too. I like a different one best. I can show it to you. You can take it. That's my favorite too. Cove smiled at you and you both admired the shell together. It was a giant conch with shades of dark and light orange. If you held it to your ear, you could practically hear the ocean. I found that one last summer when we went to the beach on a picnic. The two of you were still sitting on the floor looking through your collection of beach findings when the doorbell finally rang. Cove jumped, startled by the sound. Since the person hadn't knocked, he figured it was probably Shiloh. He knew where to look for that. Lizzie's friend? You nodded, but that didn't seem to make Cove feel better. It was already obvious that Cove didn't hide his feelings well. You could tell what he was thinking right away. This isn't a good idea. I'm sorry, there's nowhere to go. He's at our only door, and if you go upstairs, he'll find you. Cove glanced around the room, his eyes wide, and finally paused with his gaze locked onto the back of the house. I can go out the window. He was already walking towards it. Scrambling to think of something to say, he stepped forward, then paused. Do you want to break your other arm? Shiloh is the least scary person alive. Cheer up, Shiloh's gonna like you. Please don't get hurt. I'll come with you. Good idea, let's go. Mm -hmm. Shiloh's gonna like you. He likes everyone, I mean it. But I don't want to see him, I don't know him. You teased him, you comforted him, you encouraged him. Trust me, you'll be okay. Okay. Shiloh poked his head into the living room. It was impossible to know for sure if he'd heard what you've been saying or not, but you guessed that he had. Hi. Hi, Bianca. And hi, uh, Cove? Cove shot you an uneasy glance. Um, hi. I'm Shiloh, it's nice to meet you. Yeah. You have a lot of freckles. <laughs> uh, right. I do. <laughs> what are you guys doing? We're looking at shells. Awesome. Can I do it too? Cove shrugged, then looked back at your box of beach findings. Hmm. 
what about that one? The plan for the afternoon, at least as far as you were concerned, was to sit and look at the beach thing some more. You weren't really in the mood to do much of anything else. You held out a recent find to Cove, a scallop shell that had washed up on the shore. It's a pretty color, kind of, kind of like my cast. The beautiful glittering pink did look a little bit like the wrap around his arm. Pink is a nice color. Okay. Is it your favorite? Not really. What is? Maybe green or blue. Maybe green or blue. I might. It might be yellow. Oh, those are all cool. I guess. I guess. I like those colors too. There are better colors. Not sure how to deal with suddenly more awkward silence. You look back at your shells. I like those colors too. Awesome. Like usual, it didn't take long for Shiloh to get fidgety. Lizzie was his favorite. Without her around, Shiloh didn't seem to know what to do with himself. And Cove wasn't like your sister. He wasn't that much like you either. Is Lizzie coming back? Don't know. Aww. Where'd she go? I think she's at the beach, probably. Is she playing at her park? Cove's eyes lit up at the mention of the park, and he looked towards you. There's a park? Yep, but it's old. Can you show me? I want to go. He started getting up before you had even answered, and Shiloh jumped up beside him in excitement. Really? You do too, right, Bianca? The park is fun. I love it. Yeah, yeah it's right at the beach, so there's a lot of fun stuff to do and lots of sand. It has a jungle gym and a bunch of swings. That sounds like it could be cool. So, are we going to find Lizzie? I don't know. I never really wanted to see her. I just wanted to check the park out. Adrift without any direction, Shiloh finally turned to you. Okay. He perked up. Both boys wanted to go. It was only fair. After getting permission from your moms, the three of you were ready to head out. It was a short walk to the park. Lizzie had convinced your moms that it was so short she should always be allowed to walk there by herself. When you found her, she was hanging on the jungle gym, swinging back and forth. Hey, Lizzie! Her face lit up when she saw you, her big brown eyes going wide. Bianca! Shiloh! Hi! She dropped to the ground and landed with a soft thud in the sand in a split second. Shiloh had abandoned you two and scrambled over to stand by her. You were used to being left out when it was just the three of you, but now Cove was here. You weren't sure if this was an improvement. Who's that? It's Cove, he's new. Hi. I remember. Hi, Cove. Welcome to my park. Nobody ever comes to play here, so this is where we get together. She gestured wildly with her arms as if to present the area to the newcomer. While Lizzie continued talking, you took the chance to kick off your shoes and wiggle your toes through the warm sand. Nice, huh? In this neighborhood, I'm the one who comes up with the ideas. You are? Uh -huh. Yeah, I am. Who else could handle the job? Lizzie is the oldest. By a lot. My mom said you're Bianca's age. Yeah. yeah. Thought so. I'm still the only one in the group with double digits. What about other kids? Other kids? There aren't any. We're the only kids here and Shiloh's just visiting from another place. Not even tourists really bring their kids here. This is the land of ancients. Be careful that the oldies don't try to steal your youth. Aww. Oh. For a second it looked like he might cry again. But something in his eyes shifted and he looked back at Lizzie. What kind of old people? Like moms and dads or grandparents? Grandparents who don't have kids. They hate kids. Why? We haven't done anything. Only some of them don't like kids. Stop saying stuff like that. You're going to upset them. Yeah, they're really bad. Only some don't like kids. You're interjected quickly, hoping Lizzie wouldn't take things too far. Cope sniffled, his forehead creasing with worry. Lizzie was staring Cove down, but Cove wasn't even looking at her anymore. He didn't seem to care that she was there. He went into his own head. Shallow was, was the next one to speak, completely unaware of the situation. Um, I met Lizzie and Bianca in school. You'll see tons of kids there once summer is over. I don't want to go to a new school. I don't want summer to end. Shiloh looked down at the dirt. He hasn't had much striking of conversations with Cove. I like summer vacation a lot, too. All the building tension in the air suddenly vanished when Lizzie laughed. At Shallow's discomfort, at how weird she thought Cove was, at something else entirely, you didn't really know. But she laughed, face scrunching up. Okay. Welcome to Sunset Bird Cove. Take a seat, put your feet up, and get used to it. Uh, 
Uh, is right. <laughs> For the rest of Summer Cove was always there. You saw him more often than Shiloh, and on some days when she was in a bad mood or busy, you even saw him more than Lizzie. He became a staple of your everyday life, the way sun and lunch and the beach were. That first summer, you hadn't really been interested in him one way or another. He was just kind of the fact of life, someone you met with because he was there. Of course, that was, the, that was only the start of things. Select. Okay. Shopping. Growing up. Long day. Saint Castle of Fireflies. That summer ended. Yes. Okay. And this is where we're going to end it today, guys. I hope you like this video. We will pick up with this next summer in the next video. So please leave a like share and subscribe give me a roar down in the comments if you want more and i will see you in my next video